All right, now we're getting it back and popping. We're going back to Mount Vernon. Yeah. Now, y'all are from Mount Vernon? No, well, no, no. Well, we actually, I have an office. I had an office in the Powerman Center in Mount Vernon. Okay. Okay. Right, where we was actually met Ern, the mayor, Ernie Davis, and sat down with him and talked about bringing our program. How'd into, that go for you? Well, <laughs> that's my name. <laughs> well, that's a good question. <laughs> I mean, this people for policy. Keep it real. So don't feel like was, you know. Yeah, you said I was thinking. Well, how that go? Yeah. Well, you know, you you can imagine. Caller, please hold. <laughs> Caller, <know>? please hold. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that ain't nothing happened out came out of that. Bro. I, I, I'm sorry to say, but um, we had a little incubator office over there in the Empowerment Center, mm. and we was looking to do some things in Mount Vernon, and um, we put forth a proposal. We asked for a small grant. We never received that, mm-hmm. you know, but we are operating out of the Bronx at the South Bronx Neon. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, that stands for the Neighborhood Opportunity Network. Mm-hmm. We are operating in Harlem and um, uh, what they call Northern Manhattan now. Yeah, right, that's right. Takeover, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> uh, and um, we just move around. Department of Probation in the Department Bronx. Department of Probation in the Bronx. We got okay. our program great, in school. Great, but great. So, so yeah. to be a member and get back a member, what do you need? Well, what we need is a base. You get us a base where we can operate from, then we hear. We have credible messengers. I was listening to the brother talk about the snub program. Mm-hmm. We had a snub program in Harlem and Mission Society, and for whatever intensive purposes, they blew that contract. It's no longer Harlem snubs. We are not a cure violence site or program. We are a violent prevention right. organization. Right. We are not about curing the violence. We are about preventing the violence. Absolutely. You know, right. because an ounce of prevention beats a pound of cure. Right. So we work directly <laughs> with the young people in the middle school. And, and, we my, need, and we need that in Mount Vernon. Exactly. Yes. Yes. We yes. need that in Mount Vernon. Well, we want to come up here and bring our services because my men or my brothers, my comrades, are credible messengers, right? right? They done been in the streets. Their reputation in the streets was real. They were real dudes in the streets. They got caught up in the criminal justice system. They served their time like men, and while they was in there, they rehabilitated themselves because yes, prison don't rehabilitate That's you. That's right. And so, That's and, right. and and while doing that, they not only rehabilitated themselves, but they also helped rehabilitate young brothers in the prison system, and brought in. They brought in uh, uh, young students from other schools into the prison system. My my director right there had a program, and they work with children coming in from society. So now we come together. We here now. And we're saying, listen, man, we got to assume the responsibility for the young lives in our hood because we once was them. Right. Absolutely. And they look up to us. They want to be like what we were, not what we are now, sure. what we were. But we got to tell them, no, that we were suckers. Mm-hmm. That was his li- that wasn't a lifestyle, that was a death style. Mm-hmm. And we only dealt, we only lived that because that was the hand we were dealt. But man, something else is happening and you don't really know what's going on because you disconnected from your history, you disconnected from us, you disconnected from what's going on in your environment. That's and right. you really don't know what's going on. That our young people don't know don't have no right, they have no wrong. Everything with them is blur. That's right. And when I was talking in the beginning, I was explaining about the incarceration increase, that mass incarceration. What they have done is created a gap because when they were sentencing us young, at that time I was 25, they was locking us up 25 and 15 and 50 at a time yeah. with this thing called conspiracy. Mm-hmm. And they was yeah. giving us a minimum of 10, 20, 30, and some of us even got life sentences. So that means we left our young sons, our nephews, and our women with, in the streets with no support. All right. With no support. And so these young men are growing up, and now the so-called studio gangsters, hip-hop, <laughs> is directing their mind. Right. These guys never shot nobody. They never did no time. They never did nothing. They might do something, go to Rackers Island for a year like Lil Wayne did, then they come out like they vetted, and they somebody you can look up to. Nah, man. They're suckers, and they are, they are polluting <laughs> the minds of our youth. Right. And so That's what we're saying. saying is, man, listen, man. Get a hand clap for that, man. You got you can't let no hand clap go by. Yeah. <laughs> what, 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 what we're saying is that, man, um, we're here to show you. No we're not going to tell you how to do it and don't do it ourselves. That's an oxymoron. 
we're going to lead you by example so you can, we can reverse these negative trends. We, go ahead, brother. The, the reason I asked that question, and we're going to talk off, see these conversations are good on the air. Right. We're going to talk behind the scenes. Okay. And we're going to see, you know what I'm saying, if, you know, anything we can do to help Oh, you. no doubt. Oh, yeah, no without doubt. a doubt. Right. Yeah. yeah, we can definitely use that. I, I just wanted to hear what you had to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when, oh, so we when you answered my questions already, you, you got my man's attention, so you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah so that's, we can that's, use all the help uh, mm -hmm. we can get. But I wanted to speak a little bit about the sister that mm -hmm. uh, was murdered. Raynette Turner. Yes. Yes, Miss Raynette Turner, yes. Uh, I, my heart goes out to her family and Absolutely. her children. Um, that is not um, justice, it's wrong, it's, and this is something that has been going on for centuries in this country. Unfortunately, we are uh, trying to fit into a society that has absolutely rejected us and totally disrespect our lives. Um, Abraham Lincoln said that the black man has no right that a white man bound have to, is bound to respect. All right? and, and when you speak about justice, one of the founding fathers of this country said, Thomas Jefferson said, I tremble for my people, for my people when I reflect that God is just and his justice would not rest forever. Mm -hmm. Right now, our young people are dissatisfied with the police in the community. Not just here in Mount Vernon or Yonkers, but this is all over the country. And we have to understand the relationship. Now, I'm not saying that all officers are bad. I know some good ones. But the majority rule, and we look at the intention, how something starts, that's how we know the nature of it. When we look at the police force, we got to go into the history of how it came about. That's right. Right? That's how right. it really came about. And it came about in slavery. Yes, to sir. To be exact. Let's be real. Overseer. It was about policing, right, and bringing that slave back to his owner mm -hmm. and keeping him there. And to be t the truth be told, when slavery was, uh, uh, when we got emancipated, that's what they call emancipation, meaning freeing from one uh, our hands but not from one control right. because we are not really free when you live in a society that's based on institutional racism we don't control our education so going back to the police force um when we were free now you got black males right with no job got all these skills right and nothing to do hanging out on the corners because what happened was everything was blocked off from us to be successful. This is why you got labor unions. That was meant because they, they didn't have no skills. We did everything. We built everything. We did all the sewing. We did all the, the architect, ben, ben, Benjamin Banneker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? He wrote the first almanac. We smart. We did all that, but what happened, if you saw a European or a Caucasian or a white American doing anything with his hands in that time, it was a shock like to see him with the skills. So we had all the labor force at the time. So they created a labor union. And now we are locked out of everything. We never got the 40 acres in the mule. So we never really got an opportunity to get on our feet. <coughs> now, create the police force. They start locking us up because we got to get this work, this free labor again. And they put us on these, what we call these prison camps. These prison camps. And now we got the police uh, 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 in the community where they contain in our people. That's right. They contain the supposed to serve and protect. Nah, man. It, it's, it's, been, it's been a thing about don't let this spill across 110th Street. Don't let this spill into these other right, neighborhoods. Right, right, right. Right. Keep That's it right. right there. That's right. Right? So our sister who lost her life in the hands of the police department, that need to be investigated. That need to be really looked into. And our children, our young men and women in our communities are dissatisfied with the condition that they're living under. And we are losing every day, man, because what's happening is there's a disconnect. I was just listening to my brother right here talking about, yo, move out the way, politicians. Take your pensions and get out the way because older men for council, younger men, men for war. war. Yes, sir. You understand? You in the way. And you're not prepared. You're not passing the torch. You're hogging it. That's right. You, you, you. In fact, you're not you're even, you're not even enlightening us. That's right. You're putting that light under a bushel basket. You don't want us to learn about this. And so what you see is a dis, a, a frustration 
in our youth. But it's going to get even worse, bro. Absolutely. It's going to get even worse. And, 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 and speaking about, I'm going to say this and I'm, I'm going to be quiet. Our women have the right to be respected and protected as any other woman of any nation. And any black, I'm a black man in this country. Do not stand up to protect this woman with his life. He need to go hang himself. Because that's the problem also, man. We got to have a moral backbone when it comes to our women. We got to yeah, absolutely. Be men. That's right. Absolutely. You're 100% right. We got to be men. A lot of the brothers in our community, I'm going to speak for myself first and foremost. Um, I was raised by a single mother. I understand. And uh, my respect for women of all colors comes from how my mother loved herself. The way my mother loved herself, it taught me. She didn't verbally tell me, this is how you treat a woman. This is how you love a woman. The way she loved and treated herself is the way I learned to love and treat black women in particular, but respect all women of all races and colors. So as a young black male coming up in the 70s, I was born in 1965. So you can imagine what was going on in the black community when I was a young boy. We had the Black Panther Party, you understand? We had black power, and then we had heroin, and then we had all the black men in the community getting locked up because what we began to do was emulate what we saw in these black, so-called black exploitation movies. You understand? Mm -hmm. With these dudes on these movies wearing these costumes, with the cars that were kitted out with the chandeliers, the mm -hmm. long, the yeah, all feet, that the old Cadillacs. As a young black man, a young black child, a black boy at home in the room by himself because I had no siblings, I'm watching these clowns on TV and then somewhat, maybe six months to a year later, I'm venturing out to my community and I'm seeing these automobiles that was tricked out on these movies, now they're in my community. So we went from wearing the dashikis and the afros to the, and the black power fish to dressing like these clowns in these movies from the 70s. Same thing happening There were now. no more suits in the dashikis. Now we're wearing these clown pimp suits, the platform shoes. Mm -hmm. We set up a new trend. They set a new trend. And these cats at the, at my, that were doing this in my community at the time, they didn't understand the devastation, the devastation that they caused to young black boys in communities around the world that watch these movies, that idolize these clowns. Because I, we had to idolize these dudes. They became my hero because I had no father in the home. I had no hero to watch for. I wasn't taught what a hero was when it come looking at black men. So I began to idolize and, 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 and want to emulate these clowns and uh, from the age of 11, so I would say 35, 36, I was in and out of the can, in and out of the system. Mm -hmm. Because I had an emotional, I had emotional problems that I didn't know how to talk about. That's right. You understand? For example, at nine, my biological father showed up for a four hour visit, picked me up, took me out for four hours. How do you talk, as a man, how do you pick up your child, your son, and you take your son somewhere for four hours. And you, for four hours, man. Wow. And you bring me back. I don't remember nothing this man said other than four words. I love you, man. And he never came back. Mm. Wow. How do you tell me you love me and you, and you never come back? That's what's, yo, and you know, that is what's going on right now in the community with our young black ain't got no boys. Right. That's right. They don't have no positive, strong male image. We have to be taught. We have to teach our boys right. who to look to. That's right. You understand? As a role model. If I'm, if I'm a father and I got black a, a, a son, right, and I'm not doing well financially, economically, I have to understand there are other roles I'm, I have to play as a father. I have to be there to shape more and give my teach my children my children about morals principles values my mother taught those things to me in an indirect way mm -hmm. she didn't sit down and explain okay son here's the dictionary moral this means principle this means value this means i learned that through trial and error that's that's through how we that's error. how we learn a lot of stuff and, and i've always said and i just want to say this i always said like you know the reason i'm not dead in jail because i was that knucklehead you know what i'm saying it was like a lot of cats the older cats, right, you know what I'm saying, right. outside of my pops and my family members, who used to come to me at Fourth Street Playground, used to come to me at right. Eighth Playground, be like, "Yo, you really shouldn't be out here." You know what That's I'm saying? Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? You you could do something better than a lot of these cats. And they That's used to right. get at me, and I didn't want to hear them. You know what I'm saying? I had the forty and the, the joint. You know, we didn't have one right. back there. You know what I'm saying? Right, so right. We mm -hmm. had courts in our forties back then. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm out there in the park. You know what I'm saying? I, I ain't hearing. 
but but I I received all of it. I still That's heard all sure. that. They you know planted what I'm the seeds. And 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 the whole thing with that is like so now if the youth are out of control. It's now us that's failing the youth, not the youth that's failing us. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, course, like they can't teach themselves. Of like, course. You know, and it was those dudes who saw something in me for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. They saw there was something in me that I, that I was better than just like being on the you street. You know what the older you know men taught me that they saw me? They knew I knew how to be a super thug. <laughs> this is what the older cats in my neighborhood saw. They knew I knew how to be a super thug. At 11, I was carrying guns. Mm -hmm. All right? I didn't go to high school for one hour. I don't have that experience in my background to teach my daughters. And my daughter, I have three daughters, 24, 26, 21. I barely know them and vice versa. But I just finished doing 23 years and five months in prison. Mm. In and out. Not, in, not I, I did that in installments. Right. Three right. state bids back to back. Do a bid, come on, back in the crime. Do a bid, come on, back in the crime. Do a bid, come on, back in the crime. I knew better though. I knew better. I'm not going to sit there and say because I have one parent. No. My mother, she taught by, she led by example. Right. Everything she taught me not to do directly and indirectly, I'm doing it now at 49. And I think that's bananas, but it's a blessing in disguise as well. Because mm. at 49, I'm applying principles, values, morals, and things into my life that my mother had me, well, she tried to instill in me to do at 11. Right. At right. 11. Right. I want to just I want to interject a thought because I know we hear about Marina the sister, Turner. right? Mm -hmm. And um, what are we going to do about that? Um, you know, in the '60s, man, we had in the '50s we had a movement, bro. Tell me about it. Sir. It was a movement, and it was not just in uh, it was in the South. What affected us in the South? What happened in the South affected us in the North. What happened in the East affected us in the West. If something jumped off in the South, it popped off in the North. Mm -hmm. You know, you had Martin in the South, you had Malcolm in the North. You had the Black Panther Party, you West. know what I'm saying, in the West. West, right? And you had our brothers in Chicago. Mm -hmm. It was movement, you feel me? And ain't nobody was standing at the table asking for nothing. It was like, listen, we gonna get up and get it for ourselves. So what we, I think, man, uh, the situation with the sister is that we need to go, we need to all come out. Men. Right. Men. Yes, absolutely. Our women been standing up too long, bro. They been carrying us. And I, and I wanted to say something while um, Sister Salam was here. Her and the mother of other victims were going out all them times. There was no men standing Yeah, we used to. We, that's you know, crazy. You know, we, they we, would go out. Bananas. we used to run into them at, at functions and it would be six, seven mothers. Of, of victims that were killed by police. No father. Right, and then one day, and no, they, no, uh, no men from the community. Yeah, no, no men. And one day, and, and one day, I said, I said, whoa, so you know, where, where's the men? I said, I said, I said, I said these sisters is rolling by themselves. Right. That's sick, then, bro. With no, with, with no men, and ain't no men there. To, if nothing happened to them, and no sick, men then, there to hold them down. Like turning up, they out there turning hey, up. This is what they do. Let me tell you something. There's a book I read some years ago called Black Woman Backdoor to Racism, right? And it had the Willie Lynch speech in there. Mm -hmm. And it talked about how the roles reversed. Mm -hmm. Yes. You understand? And how the women became independent because they no longer had a strong male protecting image in their right. mind right. because of what happened to that mm -hmm. male. Right. And so they raised their children in reverse roles. They raised the young girl to be independent like herself. And the boy to be mm -hmm. And made the boy to be a coward. Yes, sir. Because he they, got a fear for his life. Because they was protecting him so much. Exactly. For his life. Don't speak That's right. Out for, don't speak out. Exactly. And, 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 and the point in case is this. In Baltimore, when that young man was got killed in the hands of what? Police. L all, all right. Here we go again. The young people got up. And they begin to go out there with rocks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The bloods and the crypts no longer worn now because there's an injustice, and that injustice happened to somebody that looked like us. It ain't got nothing to do with red and blue. It That's has something right. to do with who you are as a as a people and your ethnicity. So listen, them boy was out there throwing rocks, and the mother came out and grabbed her son, began to hit him, and he looking at. It. Made him drop the rock. He looking at it like, no, Ma, that was my friend. Yeah, she right. slapped him around crazy. She like slapped him around. That was my friend. Man. He didn't do nothing to deserve that. You see? 
But this is what mothers do. Because she's trying to protect his life. But right, he's saying, man, it's in me to stand up for right. justice right. for a fallen friend of mine yes, sir. that died unjustly. That's what that's what that's what's going on right now with our mothers. And so what we need to do, they need to see us brothers come together. But before we can do that, we gotta emancipate ourselves from that feminine way. Miseducation of a Negro. Mm -hmm. We got to wake up. <coughs> we got to educate ourselves. And once we do that, we got to educate our young people because knowledge, right? The, you have a will and will is your power to choose is a faculty of consciousness and especially of deliberate action. It is the control that the mind has over its own action. But will without knowledge is like power without direction. That's right. So they need knowledge, man. Yes, and sir. we have to teach them and they have to come from somebody that they absolutely respect. That's why we are credible messengers. Because we tell them like this, listen, little homie, before I allow you to destroy yourself, to destroy your brother, to destroy your community, out of love for yourself because I understand who I am and who you are, you got to destroy me first. And I'm coming to you with nothing in my hands. And they're not trying to go through us to do none of that. And they don't want that. <laughs> because they know. They, they, they understand. Right. They understand that's real. This brother care about me. Right. We rehabilitated in the joint, bro. Over, over 500 gang members. In one facility. That was in one, one facility. facility. I've been in 11. We brought down the mm -hmm. violence. And we raised the respect level among themselves. And towards the women in the joint. Mm -hmm. And it caught the attention of the warden. The, the case management, the captains and lieutenants, and so much so they wrote memorandums and say, take your program to the community, man. A judge named Judge Frederick Motts, chief judge in Maryland, say, take your program to your community, to your people, because your experience and your teaching style will keep them from falling into, into the hands of the criminal justice system and keep them from coming in front of me. Because once they get here, they're not going home no time soon. Right. Mm -hmm. That's a judge, and he don't look like us. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I took that to heart, and I came home 100,000% committed to saving our youth and warning them and teaching them mm -hmm. and pulling them together to do something positive for themselves. Because it's ironic. You want to say something, brother? No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. what's, what's ironic is that while he was in the feds doing what he was doing, I was in the state, New York State Penitentiary, doing what I was doing with the youth programs. Oh, okay, so separately, before y'all even met, huh? y'all before y'all even met, y'all were both on For doing sure. it individually. Yeah, I yeah. knew about his reputation from being in Harlem years ago, and vice versa. While he was in Harlem doing what he do, I was in Brooklyn and Queens doing what I do. But because we ran amongst the same people in, the, in different boroughs, you know, reputations heard about each other. And when I came home, I connected with him two years ago. I was like, oh snap! And I felt like I was proud that he was doing what he was doing because. I know his reputation. You understand? So with a rep like that, to see a dude doing what he's doing, it's kind of like, it's mind-boggling in a way because we don't get no money doing what we're doing, bro. We don't ask for no money. The jacket he got on, we, out, of, out, of, out of our pockets, we mm -hmm. pay for that. I do construction work in the daytime. Mm -hmm. You understand? So what we do, we just took 31 kids to the next game. Great. It cost twelve fifty for two chicken tenders and 12 french fries. At City Field in New York. Yeah, I believe it. Twelve fifty. I put the receipts on my Facebook page. Yeah, my, it was crazy. Twelve. Twelve. Twelve like, fifty for, for, for eleven and a half French fries. And eleven two and a half. Eleven and a half. You understand? <laughs> we do this. We do this because we understand what these kids are going through. We right. understand what they're right. feeling and what's driving and motivating them. But on the other on, on the other side of that coin. We also get at the men in the community. Right. We know when we do our thing, you go on my Facebook page, you go on YouTube, you see our videos and the documentary. We don't do these things, man, to shine. Right. We don't do these things to make ourselves feel better. Like most not, if I did 100 events, I cried at 99 of them. Mm. You understand? If I got mm. 10 videos, I cried at eight and a half of them. Mm. That's real. You understand? Comes Tell from them the our heart. story. Right. Because there's a lot of pain involved in yes. our story. Yes. And uh, you understand? And I know the youth, I can we identify with the men. So we talk to them, but we go in on the fathers. We go in on the men. Because you cannot, as a father, as a man, even even as a man, if you still, you, first of all, stop being afraid of these kids, man. That's my message to the men listening. 
Right. Man up, stop being afraid of these dudes because they're not really about that life that they think they are. See, and that's the difference, Talk too. Talk to them, bro. That's the difference, too. As crazy as we was, though, yo, we respected those dudes. We respected the exactly, dudes. Exactly, you know yo. Yo, yo, this is a story I always tell my, my dad, right? One of the times I honestly didn't do whatever they said I did, right. he came in the house, just assumed <laughs> I did. Wow, like, you know what I'm saying? Don't Boom, like, yo, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Found no, out no. later, you know what I'm saying? I ain't right, do it. Right, right, right. So my pops, <laughs> my pops that's big and, you know, built like yeah. that, you know what I'm yeah. saying? I was like 153 pounds, right, you know what I'm saying? Right, like, yo, right, then. Right. And my pops built, you know. Yeah. Yo, dude was like, yo, my bad, I made a mistake. Yeah. You got one, you get, you know, you get a free one. Right, right. Yo, do you know I feared hitting my pops because no I felt doubt. like if I could hit him a little... Harder than he yeah. expected to get hit. Yeah. What I was gonna get back wasn't worth it. No, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no, nah, nah, we good. We good. We good. We good. We good. We good. But I'm saying we respected. Exactly. We respected those that was worth their respect. Exactly. There was some we didn't know. Respect. I'm gonna be honest. Though. I'm gonna be honest. There was yeah. some we didn't respect. Right now, but there was a lot though that no, we did. So when we no. was walking certain places, right. I didn't do certain things right. in the view of certain exactly. people. You know exactly. what I'm saying? I knew where I could do it at. Exactly. Now you could do it anywhere. Now you could do it anywhere. And there's no respect. And now, and now it's the older people. They in the house scared to come out because exactly. of the young people. Exactly. Like, where we, somewhere we got that exactly. twisted. Yeah. But let me just say this wow. about respect, right? And about the fear factor. Respect is based on trust. Absolutely. Yes, you sir. see what I'm saying? When we ask the young people, you know, mm -hmm. uh, what is it that you want, man? What you want? They said, listen, we want somebody that we can trust. Yes, that's right. trustworthy. Right, right, right. Someone right. that can teach us what we do not know. Right. We actually... What is the problem? They said the problem is the older us. cats don't care about us and we don't know how to care. Yep. And I took that and went right to work. And so I got like questions that I do pre and post assessment, self assessments once they come in, before they come into our program and after they finish the program. And one of the things that the young people say about us in the program and the credible messengers is that we loyal, that we keep our word. That's the respect. I did a, a documentary was shot on me in the program that I was the co pro program coordinator uh, mentor called Project 180 up in the North Bronx, mm -hmm. Pastor Q English, um, BCCJR, Bronx Clergy Criminal Justice Roundtable, Columbia University shot it. It's on YouTube. All right, no doubt. And uh, the young man named Vernon, they asked him in an interview about going back because they, they took the kids from a program called uh, with the 47th precinct called uh, the J. Rip program. These are young kids who had committed robbery, cell phones and stuff like that, 15 years old. The young man said, he said, I, 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 don't, I wouldn't do that because Antonio would be disappointed in me. Yeah, he wouldn't Did commit you? that crime. He wouldn't today. commit that crime because Antonio would be disappointed in me. That's respect. That was be based on trust. That was based on I'm there and I'm here for you. And if we can do that with these young people, they will start following, they will start listening to us again. But a lot of the guys that I know from my past that know that see me down here in the streets doing what it is that I'm doing, and I talk to them about this, their attitude is that, yo, these little guys don't listen to nobody. Right. Forget these little, right. you know the language they use. Right. And I say, yo, that's not right, man. That's wrong, man, because somebody talked to you. Mm -hmm. right, 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 right. Somebody right, spoke right, to you. Right, 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 right. Right. Hey, right. Somebody yeah. told you get off the corner. Right, right, Somebody right. told you to go to school. Right, right, right. Somebody broke up beats between you and other cats. Right. Why you can't do it for them? And you sure. know what? And it's not just that too. We I had a conversation. I'm gonna bring them out too. Um, Lowe's Moore. I had a conversation with Lowe's Moore after we did a, um, a youth symposium right. at, at City Hall with the, with the city councilman. Right. And he was like, "Yo, I got a problem with you asking the youth what they want." when they fell in out of high school. But I was like, yo, and not to put him on the spot, but he spoke about this at his book signing. I was like, yo, brother, you was talking about how you was failing and how them, the mm -hmm. coaches and them got you playing basketball and how that saved your life. So he said, well, I stopped using sports as a carrot. Why, that's the carrot that saved you. Wow. Yo, man, dude, I wish like, so I was there to say so that, saying, see that like, dude, like, man. So I'm saying, like, and I don't mean to put him on the spot, but I mean, I'm putting, you know, we uh, had this conversation. That's all right, he on the spot. When, when you talk to me, you know I do radio, and you know I write, yeah, yeah, so I'm just so. saying, like, but, but this is the conversation we had, and I'm like, this is the carrot that saved your life, so why wouldn't you continue to yes, use sir. that carrot to save others' lives? Now, he was saying that some of them just want to play ball and they don't want to do school, but, yo, your coaches wouldn't allow. You said your coaches went to your mom's and was like, yo, 
he don't do this, he don't play ball. Right. He said coaches and other men came and sat with him and tutored him to make sure he passed that test. Right. You know what I'm saying? So He had mentors. So so, so, so then we need to continue. You need yes, to sir. continue doing that. Yeah. Yes, sir. You know, I mean, he's the head of the Boys and Girls Club, so he's doing his thing. He's doing his Don't thing. Don't get me wrong; he's the executive of the Bet More. Excellent. You know but he just that one thing, though. I had I had a problem, and I know I'm gonna hear about this. But anyway, <laughs> I'm a, I, I, but that's just an example of that's an example of the generation. Mm-hmm. Like it's just one right. example, like what you just said. You know what I'm saying? And right. this is a whole different situation. But not doing what was done for you. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we dropping our whole generation is dropping the ball. Right. And, and on right, every right. level, that's the point right. of making. And that was the only point of bringing that up. To, to no, that's a saying. good point, though. That's a very good point mm-hmm. because we took a course called motivational interviewing. Mm-hmm. Basically, it's like, yo, instead of seeing the glass half empty, see it half full. Right? Use, find out what is good in the individual. Right? And use that to your advantage to get him to go to change, mm-hmm. to go in the right direction. So by them kids, they love to play basketball. That's a discipline, mm-hmm. right? right? And you can use that as the carrot to, to really get them yeah. where you need yeah. them to be. Yo, you know when we was in high school, when yeah. we were in high school, do you know they didn't care about nothing else? But if you said no basketball, I that was just like, yo, for real, mm-hmm. like, yo, that was like, yo, you didn't took him away, you put him in jail or something. Like, Listen. Like, dude, <laughs> right. what, no basketball. Like, that was like the worst thing you could do in gym and be like, yeah. no ball. Like, no ball. What? Give me the ball. Like, yo, yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Give me the ball. all the balls away. We closing uh, the gym. Yo, that was like a discipline. Like, okay, so what we need to do to get that back open. Basically, mm-hmm. that was the That's question. right. And, and, and you know, it's like that even now. Mm-hmm. Right. It's like that right now. Right. You know what I'm saying? When, all right, for instance, we was coming up. Our parents punished us. Right. Right? You 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 can't go to the to the, the to the park today, mm-hmm. right? And, and 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 or take today they might take the cell phone for a little while or mm-hmm. shut down the computer. Right. I had one of my little right. uh, 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 mentees tell me, "Yo, help me get my computer back because my grandmother took it." You know stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And then he, I said, "Well, do what she tell you to do, and you'll get it back." And I said, "I'm a I'm a ask her, but whatever she tell you to do, you do it. Then I'll help you get it back." So I talked to grandma. I said, listen, give him a week. We want to see what he do. He did what he was supposed to do. Grandma gave him back that computer. Right. His behavior changed. And that's what you got to do with these kids. Take away they What's computers, their then? iPads, they, they Xboxes. Then? Yo, Anything dude, for real. That's how basketball was to us in that. Like, that's right. Like, right. right. It's now it's the Xbox. There's the Xbox and yeah. iPads. and Because, the- yo, there wasn't a time that it was daylight. That's and right. I was sitting in my house, mm-hmm. like, Yes. That I that I that I didn't want to go outside if I had to stay in the house. You That's know what I'm right. saying? These kids be like, "Yo, let's go outside." Nah, nah, they be playing the games. Right. So, Your word, like, right. you got to almost like, yo. I was like, "Yo, I need you to run to the store for me here, and get something for yourself." That was the only way to get little men out the house, like, only yo. Way, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, yo. only way we have to engage him, man. But I would like to say this before we leave. I know time is of an essence. Oh no doubt, no doubt. I want to just shout out the team because I got some very good people that are working with us. My man Deadeye. He, his name is Andre Evans. He okay. did 26 years in the prison, uh, state penitentiary for attempt murder on a police officer. I met him at the Department of Probation because I sit on a form where we speak to new probationers and new parolees, mm-hmm. parolees who are coming home. And that's and he heard my message, and he, after the, uh, wow. the meeting, he came to me and said, um, listen, bro, the next time you talk to the children, I want to talk to them. I got a story to tell. He's the one of the founding five, mm-hmm. right? One of the founding fives of the Bloods in New York City. New York State. New York State. Yeah, New York State. This is the big homie. Um, mm-hmm. I want to shout out my man Johnny Fresh, um, John Bradley. This is my VP. Yeah, um, I just want. I just want to. Yeah. We, we got a lot of callers that listen oh. and they be on Facebook. Oh, they got. So Brenda, Brenda Crump says. No woman needs for her man to profess his love for her, provide her, <laughs> and protect her. She just wanted to say that when you said it. Oh, when yeah. You said what a woman needs. She just wanted to throw she her say, two She said, did she don't? She said, no. She said, well, a woman needs. She need that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A woman needs for a man to profess his love for her. She said, profess in, in capital letters. Right. Provide in capital letters for her. Right. And protect in, in capital letters for her. And I want to get this to the lady that just sent that in. Let me say this. A man, a real man, is the intellectual economical, spiritual, wise, God in hand, God in, right, God in the course and supporting the needs of his family. That's what a man do. So you're right, sister. You has, he has to confess his love, but not just confess it. Profess, he has to, profess, pro, I mean, profess. profess it, not just profess it, but, but sure. demonstrate it to you. 
Because Absolutely. love is a verb, it's an action. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And the only way you can do that is by giving your life. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. That's no doubt. the only way. But I want to just shout out Sarah Delaney, the outreach coordinator, Stacy Carpenter, who is our administrative assistant, um, Shanice, she's also a new member of our organization. She's a member of the Democratic Club in Harlem on 135th Street between 7th and Lenox. Um, um, we also want to shout out um, the no, rest of who else? Who I are mean, yeah, you know we Vivica forget, White. We absolutely cannot forget Mount Vernon's own Patty Coon. Patty Coon, definitely. Well, I got, and, I, and, and, and I wanted to say that's somebody that I know from back in the day. Yeah, absolutely. Patty Coon. So, 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 yeah. so she hollered at me when we did the, uh, yes, sir. With, the with the youth symposium. Right. But the mayor actually locked it at a certain time and wouldn't right. let nobody else come in. That was kind of crazy. Right. right. And then she brought it up. But since Cynthia was running this part of it, you know okay. what I'm saying? I stepped back and was like, nah, you got to go through Sid. I, right. I knew it was going to happen, but you know what I'm right. saying? I was let her run through and talk let to Sid. You and hold on. But I, I put it to, I, I made that, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, you can't forget Patty, up. man. She she's, stays up. She's riding down. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Patty, Forming big up to you. Planning, plotting, and no giving us direction and ideas and making connections yes, she for this do. program. Yes, because she you know we don't have no funds, right. but we love what we do. Right. right. We love what we do. And with our passion combined with her passion, that's why we're here. So shout out to you, Patty. And Patty. also, exactly. Harlem Mother Save and um, Guns Down Life Up funds for HAC. Big up to them. Reverend, you know, uh, Reverend Williams, Peace, uh, Perfect Peace Ministry. Oh, yeah. Inner City Gun Violence. My spiritual mother, Dr. Pastor um, Henry. She has Inner City Gun Violence. This is a mother who had lost her only son, yeah. mm. her only child, mm. to a murder in the projects over there. And um, what that said, I believe... I don't know exactly what project it is, but development. But she lost her only son, and the murderer of her son still is still on there. the loose. And mm -hmm. she's been with us ever since. So that's the family, the LBE family, the RTT family. We are here. We, we love to be uh, come in Mount Vernon to yes. give our services. Our program is in the middle school. Um, we work with the, uh, uh, in the Bronx. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And before you go, two things. Um, I wanted to... Um First of all, give you a chance to, if you got any social media, how people can contact you, that's one. Mm -hmm. right. But two, y'all also, I got y'all, I got her involved with SIN for the, for the program on Tuesday. Oh, yeah, yeah. Gonna be, I want to yeah, big up the, the program, so talk about. Oh, the program, okay, Malik. Well, the program Lead by Example, Reverse the Trend, it is what it is. It is what we say it is. Lead by Example to Reverse the Trends. We lead by example in the way we conduct ourselves in the community, and we do what we do to reverse the negative trends that we've, established mm -hmm. and the ones that others established like my man dead eye he's talking about him and my little brother they started the bloods in new york city and sing sing in 1992 okay and it flourished to what it is today which is something that's a fad and it's culturally uh, 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 attractive but mm -hmm. what blood stands for is black love brotherly over, love brotherly love, brotherly love overrides oppression and, and destruction all right that, i don't know what it is today <laughs> so, um, what we do? I don't we, think the people that claim it now know that. Right. Nah, <laughs> now, man. I'm not, I'm not, we not shooting them down right. because had this thing been on my block when I was 14, 15, I would have been bloody gripped too. Right, I'm right, a right. hundred because right. I know how reckless I was. I was down with everything. Right, right, right. 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 So primarily, our program is designed to be in public schools right. to sit down with the youth, engage the youth, um, mentor the youth. Um, but we do what we do in the streets. Because this is where the violence is happening. Right. We, I want to well, interject. I, 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 I okay. want to just say, so the yeah. town hall is sad, uh, Tuesday, yeah, right? Yeah, Tuesday, town hall. That's what doing. And, right. and as soon as um, Patty saw me post it, or, or Cynthia actually right. posted on my page, she was hitting me like, yo, I want to be a part. I want to be a part. My right. gonna be a, I was like, yo, I had her go through Cynthia. So shout out for Cynthia, who had to leave. Shout to out to take, Cynthia. Big to up. Take, Thank to you. Take, right, uh, yes. Mother, mother um, Salam home. Right. You know what I'm saying? But she... It was the driving force behind this town hall right. that we're having Tuesday, and she brought everybody back. And 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 Patty was the driving force to mm -hmm. get into me to get y'all involved. Right, in it. And, right. I, and I connected her with with, with Cynthia. Oh so, man, so see, that's, that's, how that's how y'all. That's how y'all. She kept blowing up. Yo, y'all gotta be part of it. They gotta be part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, we want to share. She was like, yo, yo. She was like. Tell Andre I need to talk to him. I need some sponsorship. Yo, tell him. She been hitting me for like a month or so. Yeah. Like, yo, for real. She been hitting me. That's that passion. Right. That's that passion. So you know she um. I told her I, I knew that her hooking up with with Cynthia would be a good thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So the right. two of them got to talking, and that's what led to y'all being here. Thank and you. Thank being you, involved Cynthia. In this, and, and the town Thank hall. You, on. So, so yeah. you know, them two women right there pulled Excellent. me together. You know hey, saying? we have a GoFund. We want to open a youth crisis resource center. 
We have a GoFundMe. It's GoFundMe LBE dash RTT. GoFundMe LBE dash RTT. <coughs> like my brother said, we receive no funding. We are DOE vendor. We are NYCHA consultant. And we got a big, we got it. We are a nonprofit organization, 501c3. For those who understand what that means. And we got a big event coming up in East Chester Gardens on the 28th. We are doing a lead by example, reverse the trend partnership with East Chester, East Chester, uh, Gardens. East Chester Gardens uh resident uh, association. Mm -hmm. We're doing a unity in the community peace festival. We're giving away food, we're gonna have basketball, nice. tabletops, everything. Nice. Chess, pull up, double dutch, Dodge ball. We man, everything, music, DJ, <laughs> rap, <laughs> all that type of stuff. We're going to have a ball. Y'all are welcome to come out. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Yes. No Thank doubt, you. no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. So um, make sure you have so, Patty said oh, you yeah. put the link to the GoFundMe and all that. Now. Okay, right. definitely. So we can post it. You know what I'm definitely, saying? Right, definitely. Right, definitely. And if anybody want to reach me, my number is 732-430-9020. 732-430-9020. And my email address is lead by example. That's one word. Lead by example, one, two, at gmail.com. Lead by example, one, two, numeral 12 at gmail.com. Our website is wwwleadbyexample reverse the trend.com. Um, we having some technical difficulty right now with our website. It should be back up tomorrow. All right, no doubt, mm -hmm. no doubt. And, and, and a video of this will be on our site, Black Westchester. Okay, um, back. Within right. the next 48 hours. So. Yeah, and yeah. you get, and and sure you get on YouTube and you can take the link and yeah, put it share. wherever oh, you yeah. want to. You yeah, can yeah, share yeah, the yeah, link. Yeah, oh, man, right lovely, there. man. Yeah, I, I want to appreciate you, acknowledge you, brothers, man. Um, I, I, you got to forgive me, but the name again so I can lock it in my mind. Yeah, AJ, I'm AJ, AJ, I'm, AJ, I'm Brother Damon. Brother AJ, man, and Brother Damon, I want to thank you, brothers, for allowing us to come on y'all. Uh, Anytime, uh, talk brother. show, man. Well, I mean, that's what this is for. Yeah, right? I appreciate that's, that's it. This is the for. voice of the community. This is real talk for the community. Yeah, this man. This is what you talk about the '70s. Mm -hmm. This is what our parents had. Yes, exactly. This right. is what my mom used to listen yes, to. Right. Bob Law and all the other yeah, people. My mom. Right. Right. That's right. how I knew some of the stuff I knew. Exactly. From so right. we don't have this because they killed all of the, you know, radio stations right. like this. So you know that that was the purpose of doing this. Man, so, just keep doing what you're doing, brother. We need. Our brothers like you, man, you doing this right here, giving us a outlet to talk to our people, mm -hmm. and we out in the street and in the schools, man, we can make a change. That's right. We can right. make a difference. That's what and it's that's all what about. That's what it's all about, man. And then we got that's the website, about. Black Westchester. News Black with, Westchester. News with the black point of view. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Trying to change the narrative a little bit. And, yeah. And not only hold the feet to the fire of those ain't doing right, but right. to uplift cats like you. Yeah, that, that, appreciate that. mainstream that. media ain't going... Right exactly. about, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Until y'all mess, and then when y'all mess up, oh, y'all yeah. gonna be front page. Oh, no question. You know what I'm saying? But, but until then, y'all yes, exactly. can't, right, get, right, right. can't right. buy ink. <laughs> nah, we <laughs> can, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can. not You know, I, and this is why we wear it on our sleeve, yes, where we came from. <coughs> you know what I'm saying? What we've been through, because that is our credibility. We're yes, not right. hiding that. We're not trying to go in and say, okay, we need a job, and you're gonna block us from getting a job because we got felonies. No, we got felonies. Right, and right, you ain't right. got to give us a job if you don't want to. We're going to create our own. That's there you what go. We do. That's what it's no about. No doubt, no doubt. That's no doubt. what it's about. What about the last words? Real quick, you can find me on, Insta I mean, on Instagram at KLR650 Malik. KLR650 Malik. That's the dirt bike, the big dirt bike. I'm a, I'm, you know, I love like bikes. <laughs> he loves bikes. <laughs> and um, you can find me on Facebook at Maurice Simpson. Just search Maurice Simpson. I I'm think I got right. a Facebook. I don't know too much about it. <laughs> <all laughs> <all laughs> it's Antonio, Antonio Hendrickson. Hendrickson. Yeah. yeah, that's what we do. And once again, like my brother said, brother, AJ we and Damien, you. appreciate thank you. Much love, man. Thank, 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 thank you, all brothers, man. Thank you for the outlet. Thank, thank you, all brothers. And um, sure. everybody that's listening, thanks for listening to People for Politics Radio Show. No doubt. Uh, you can also check us out every Sunday at 3 p.m. on White Plains Public Access. Um, uh, we are on Verizon and Cable Vision on White Plains Public Access, the full two hours of the show. Uh, we like to thank them for blessing us for the full two hours. You never get a public access show with more than 30 yeah, minutes, get, but yeah, they yeah, bless yeah. us with the, the, the whole the, the whole show. Un uninterrupted. Yeah, and it's oh, been man, going. That's great. And, and it's you don't always know on. what you're going to get from us sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 I was told they got the disclaimer up. They got the disclaimer up. So, so you know, but, um, yeah, you can check us out and blackwestchester.com and, and, and everybody that's listening, please come out Tuesday. Like I said, Mount Vernon is ground zero. Is, is, is ground zero for the social justice movement. Uh, for, for, for New York State. Thank you, brother. Thank you. It's, it's ground zero for the social justice movement for, for New York State. 
Uh, we gotta we gotta demand justice for for Raynette Turner and and demand the change that's right, that's in up. Mount Vernon Police Department. That's right, okay. and that's what we gotta demand for. And uh, like I said, you're gonna hear more from me because the gloves is coming off now. Take the gloves and, off, and, and, brother and, Damien. The gloves no doubt, is coming no off. I just want to also say we got the um, you know, um, the Fleetwood Citizen Society in Mount Vernon. They had the city council uh, candidates debate, and the mayoral one is this Wednesday. Riverside Church you need to do that. That's the first Damn, mayoral debate. Right. Um, and, and, and if it wasn't for, and if it wasn't for, I want to say this, if it wasn't for the Fleetwood Citizen Society, Mount Vernon wouldn't have had a city council debate. Because wow, wow. Wahlberg only got scheduled for one for the mayor. So if it wasn't for, like, people didn't take that serious, if it wasn't for them cats on in Fleetwood, there would never have been a city council debate. But that's by design. You know don't, don't, don't get that twisted. Right, right, right. right. Because, because they're not going to have one in the south side. Right, I'm, right, right. I'm going, I'm going to tell you, when I ran for city council, well, we did actually, one on the actually, north side, and then just, they canceled all actually, the one on actually, the Actually, actually, there's a last minute chance, and I don't know yet, that there's going to well, be well, one. Well, it's going to have to be. Well, well, it's going to have to be a one for the mayorship yeah, yeah. And, and and one for the city council. Yeah, so we we oh, trying to, right to put that together. Yeah, trying to get to, yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard about that. And plus, with everything that's going on in Mount Vernon with the lady dying, I mean, this is yeah. You got six candidates. So you you running? No, I ran. Well, I I ran. Because we getting ready to no no. Listen, no, but I got I got. No, it's a long story about my my candidacy, oh, okay. brother. The DA's still trying to put yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's still trying to put me in jail, man. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. To keep me from running. Keep you yo, from yo. running. Well, yeah. well oh, this is Black Westchester <laughs> presents People Before Politics. <laughs> yeah. As always, you could be doing anything else, but you chose to ride with us, and we greatly appreciate that. Till next time. Peace. 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 You will not be able to stay home, brother. You will not be able to plug in, turn on, and cop out. You will not be able to lose yourself on stag and skip out for beer during commercials because the revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be brought to you by Xerox in four parts without commercial interruptions. The revolution will not show you pictures of Nixon blowing a bugle and leading a charge by John Mitchell, General Abrams, and Spiro Agnew to eat hog moths confiscated from the Harlem sanctuary. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be brought to you by the shape of a war theater and will not star Natalie Woods and Steve McQueen or Bullwinkle and Julia. The revolution will not give your mouth sex appeal. The revolution will not get rid of the nub. The revolution will not make you look five pounds thinner because the revolution will not be televised, brother. There will be no pictures of you and Willie Mae pushing that shopping cart down the block on the dead run or trying to slide that color TV into a stolen ambulance. NBC will not be able to predict the winner at 8.32 on the court from 29 districts. The revolution will not be televised. There will be no pictures of pigs shooting down brothers on the instant replay. There will be no pictures of pigs shooting down brothers on the instant replay. There will be no pictures of Whitney Young being run out of Harlem on the rail with a brand new process. There will be no slow motion or still life of Roy Wilkins strolling through Watts in a red, black, and green liberation jumpsuit that he has been saving for just the proper occasion. Acres, Beverly Hillbillies, and Hooterville Junction will no longer be so damn relevant, and women will not care if Dick finally got down with Jane on Search for Tomorrow, because black people will be in the street looking for a brighter day. The revolution will not be televised. There will be no highlights on the 11 o'clock news and no pictures of Harry R. Uh, women liberationists and Jackie Onassis blowing her nose. The theme song will not be written by Jim Webb or Francis Scott Key, nor sung by Glenn Campbell. Tom Jones, Johnny Cash, Engelbert Humperdinck, or the rare earth, the revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be right back after a message about a white tornado, white lightning, or white people. You will not have to worry about a dove in your bedroom, the tiger in your tank, or the...